Okay. Hi everyone. Thank you for so much for joining us. I don't see, you know, it seems to be the people that are going to be here are here. It's 5.15, so we'll go ahead and get started. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. It doesn't seem like anybody else is coming in, so we're just going to go ahead and get started. It's about 5.15. Um, I wanted to let you all know that there is a sign-in sheet right when you walk in the door to provide your name, contact information, anything so that we're able to get a hold of you if you have questions um, or just if you, you know, would like to provide that information. Um, so we're going to go ahead. Will there be time to um, answer questions after the presentation? Can, you, can everybody hear me okay now? I apologize. There's no microphone in this facility, so I will do my best. Good? People in the back? Great. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, so, okay, hello and welcome to Rural Communities Housing Development Corporation's community meeting for the Collier Avenue Apartments. We are pleased that you joined us today to learn about, more about our CHDC's mission and values, who we are, what we do, and how we do it. Next one, yeah. Um, this evening we'll go over a variety of agenda items. I know there are probably a lot of questions, Sorry, one second. It's a little out of focus. You turn the no. Yeah. No, that's a little straight. Sorry, thank you very much. We will go over a variety of agenda items. I know there are probably a lot of questions about the development, and there will be time to ask those questions at the end of my presentation. My goal tonight is to provide you with as much information as possible about the development our agency and staff. I will be sharing information about our development teams, our property management teams, and we'll go over some of California's desperate need for housing. I will share information about the development of the apartments, the timeline to completion, and the populations that we will serve. A little bit about our CHDC's mission, which again, Rural Communities Housing Development Corporation. Um, we provide decent, affordable housing to low and moderate income persons. These are the values that bind us as human beings and as neighbors. At our CHDC, we believe that together we can build a better, brighter future if we keep giving voice to these values and if we keep leading with facts, keep sharing stories, and move people to action. Our CHDC is a local nonprofit, affordable housing developer that has served Lake and Mendocino counties since 1975. Initially, our CHDC was involved in developing affordable multifamily apartment communities for low-income senior citizens, special needs groups, and families. Since this time, we have expanded by providing a USDA rural development multi mutual, excuse me, self-help housing program serving Lake, Mendocino, and Humboldt counties. Our CHDC also provides property management for our portfolio of almost 1,500 units in 50 communities across rural Northern California. Our CHDC currently owns and manages seven multifamily developments in Lake County alone. That total 226 units of affordable housing. We have facilitated the construction of 74 self-help homes in Lake County. These developments are located in Clear Lake, Kelseyville, Lakeport, Lucerne, Middletown, and Upper Lake. We manage properties with an emphasis on resident and community relations. We take pride in caring for our residents and going above and beyond to ensure that they are happy. We believe that this is one of the key components of creating a positive culture and the passion that our staff is the staff, the passion that our has staff. I'm sorry. <laughs> Nervous. Um, <laughs> we believe that one of the key components of creating a positive culture is the passion that our staff has for the population that we serve. And I'm going to introduce you to some of the RCHDC team that is present here tonight with us. First, we have our Director of Development, Angelica Figueroa. 
Angie has been with RCHDC for six years, starting as a project manager and earning her way up to a co-director position. She is involved in all aspects of development from site acquisition and project financing to overseeing the construction phase of all projects. Myself, my name is Jessica Johnson. I am a project manager. I'm the newest to our team. I bring extensive knowledge in the supportive services area I part and I have participated in multiple collaborations focusing on program and project development with community stakeholders and partnering agencies, helping bring more robust supportive services to some of the most vulnerable populations our communities serve. Rebecca Nielsen is our Director of Property Management. Rebecca has been with RCHDC, I want to say the longest out of anybody, 14 years, she's amazing. Uh, serving in the following capacities, property manager, compliance specialist, regional manager, senior regional manager, and now director of property management. Michelle Fox, she is our regional manager for Lake County. So once the development is complete, she will be the, the regional manager for it. Michelle has been working in the affordable housing industry for the past 14 years. She has worked with programs such as Housing Choice Voucher and Permanent Supportive Housing Voucher, and she has managed both subsidized and non-subsidized properties. She previously worked for the Community Development Commission in Ukiah, which is, anyways. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. Okay, addressing some of California's housing needs. I'm gonna take this really slow. There's, this is a lot to digest as I give this information because as we all know, it is, you know, California is really struggling for housing <laughs> on all levels. Everybody feels it. In California, more than one in three households struggle to meet their basic needs. One in three. Many households are only missed, are only one missed paycheck or unexpected medical bill away from being forced to, be, to move or becoming homeless. These shortfalls burden family budgets limit economic growth, maintain residential segregation, and disproportionately cause higher rates of poverty and homelessness, particularly for marginalized populations. Affordability in housing is determined by whether the rent paid would cause the household to be cost burdened, defined by spending more than 30% of their growth income, gross monthly income on housing, or severely cost burdened, spending 50% or more of their gross monthly income on housing. The most cost burdened, the more cost burdened a household is, the more likely the household is at risk of becoming homeless, and the less likely the household will be able to take care of their basic needs, such as food, food health care, child care, and transportation. None of the 1.18 million renter households in California earning 30% of the area median income can afford average asking rents in all 58 counties in California. 1.18 million. The top five most common occupations in California pay less than the wage needed to afford a home. The California State Department of Finance Finance conservatively estimates there are about 3 million minimum wage workers in California. Without being cost burdened, the affordable cost of housing to a full-time minimum wage worker would be $728 a month. From 2020 to 2021, the average fair market value rent for a two-bedroom apartment in the state was, was $2,030 obviously a difference of approximately $1,400, huge amount. To afford this rent and utilities without being cost burdened, a household must earn $6,700 per month or $81,000 a year. This translates to an hourly wage of $39 an hour. We all know that the minimum wage just barely went up to 15. California's housing affordability crisis is an acute example of a national problem. In 2021, there was no state, no state in the US where a worker earning minimum wage could afford to rent a modest two bedroom by working a 40 hour week. These are huge facts and they are all checkable. <laughs> Pardon the <laughs> not actual word. <laughs> um, 
To exacerbate the housing costs in recent years, California has experienced catastrophic wildfires, resulting in the destruction of tens of thousands of homes. I don't need to tell any of you that Lake County has been particularly impacted by these fires. Since 2015, excuse me, nearly three quarters of the land mass of Lake County has burned. Some of it more than twice, some of it more than three times. Obviously there's housing units within all of that area. <coughs> Multiple fires in almost every Northern California County have burned. I'm sorry, multiple fires in almost every Northern California County have burned housing units. This has resulted in a loss of approximately 25,000 housing structures in the last eight years. In 2018, the Camp Fire in neighboring Butte County burned 19,000 homes in Paradise alone. Five years later, there are only approximately 1,400 homes that have been rebuilt. In the last seven years? Um, since, yes, in the last five years, excuse me. Okay, permanent supportive housing costs is cost effective. Numerous studies and research have proven that permanent supportive housing, which is like what we will be providing at Collier Avenue Apartments, is a cost effective means to combating homelessness. Costs associated with the homeless population vary from first responders, fire, fire, police, and hospital visits. Frequent use of these services often creates a burden on first responders, along with costing the taxpayer money. Permanent supportive housing has proven to reduce these impacts by combining housing and wraparound supportive services with the Lake County Behavioral Health, which I apologize. <laughs> I did not introduce Scott Abbott. We stand up? Thank you very much. I apologize. This is Lake County's Program Director of Mental Health Supportive Services and Housing. Um, the, this, this model is, a, is an evidence-based model. From a fellow developer, Jamboree Housing, this cost study shows proven solutions that cost, that cost the community less. Jamboree partnered with the United Way of Orange County to fund a new study conducted by the University of California, Irvine. The study reveals the true cost of homelessness to Orange County communities, cities, and taxpayers. I realize the first thing that you probably are thinking this is not a realistic comparison because we are not Orange County. However, it is still, you can still drill it down by the model and see the same evidence. How much does homelessness cost? This study shows the annual cost for services for a chronically homeless person is $100,759 per year. This study also shows that permanently housing the same person and providing supportive services is 50% cheaper. $51,587 each year. Additionally, the annual cost of services for the most chronically homeless person on the street is approximately $440,000 per year. The annual cost to house that same person in permanent supportive housing with services is $55,000 per year, a cost savings of 88%. The following information is from the Department of Housing and Urban Development. Uh, it was from an article leveraging the health housing nexus. Research suggests that supportive housing is an effective intervention for individuals experiencing chronic homelessness. Several studies find, that, find evidence that housing first and permanent supportive housing interventions for people experiencing homelessness reduce the use of expensive healthcare services and promote better health. Many individuals experiencing chronic homelessness are also high cost frequent users of health and emergency services for whom supportive housing could be an important health intervention. Individuals experiencing homelessness are three times more likely than those in the general population to use an emergency department at least once a year due to chronic illness. Research has found that case management, along with coordinated care, are effective in reducing hospitalizations and emergency visits. Emergency department visits by chronically ill homeless experience, uh, chronically ill adults experiencing homelessness. 
<coughs> a study by Laramar et al. of a housing first intervention in Seattle for individuals experiencing chronic homelessness and severe alcohol problems finds that the intervention which offered participants housing to, and access to voluntary case management and on-site services reduced alcohol sum consumption as well as total costs with monthly costs averaging $2,500 per person. Everybody can still hear me good? Yeah. We're all good? Okay. I'm just, this is not in the presentation, but I just want to say this. One of the reasons that it is difficult to find relevant facts that are also applied to this area is because it's a less studied area. There are larger studies in areas with larger populations of homelessness. Okay, now we'll move on to the Collier Avenue apartments design and the population served. The primary funding source for this community is low income housing tax credits. LIHTC, or LITIC as we call it in the industry, is a program where large corporations invest in affordable housing and receive a reduction on their capital gains tax, capital gains tax consequence by doing so. This is essentially millionaires taxation funds. These are not taxpayer dollars. We are proud to fund affordable housing with these monies and in doing so, saving the local taxpayers the costs described previously. Developing housing in this way has been effective throughout the country and its positive financial and humanitarian impacts have been evidenced to be significant. The development site is 3.1 acres and in fact, you can see it <laughs> right from the parking lot, which I'm sure you probably are aware of where it is located. The property is zoned R3 residential, which allows for high density residential development. The Collier Avenue community will consist of three two-story buildings. Although it's a little bit difficult to see in this picture, you can see it by this uh, architectural rendering. Um, it will have 29 one-bedrooms, 10 two-bedroom apartments, and one three-bedroom unit for an on-site property manager. The three buildings share a courtyard that will be the focal point for gathering and creating a sense of community among the residents. The first floor of the development will have 40 ADA accessible units and 14 adaptable units, which means that they can be easily transformed into an ADA accessible unit. Collier Avenue is, design, is designated as a supportive housing community. The development will contain common space available to all residents, including laundry room, a community room with a complete kitchen available for residents' use, and a manager's office. The development will also include offices for confidential service provision and a conference room for group sessions or related service meetings. The courtyard, loosely bounded, as you see, which will actually be facing just as it is. So from here, you look right into it just like that. <clears throat> the, the courtyard, loosely bounded by the residential administrative <coughs> buildings, was designed specifically to help the tenants build community while providing privacy from Highway 20. There will be 44 uncovered parking spaces, including two accessible spaces and two electric vehicle charging stations. The project design will include sufficient solar panels to achieve net zero energy use, and all other utilities will be paid by the developer, development, the owner, RCHGC. There will be several improvements to Collier Avenue, including upgrading water lines and sewer connections, repaving a portion of the street, and upgrading or adding curbs and adding curbs, gutters, and sidewalks. And so, Angie, this is a little bit hard to get it to actually play. This is a, one of our developments. Uh, this is a progress video of a 50-unit affordable housing development currently under construction in Wairika, California. It is a 50-unit community with a mix of single resident occupancy units, one and two bedroom units, and a three bedroom manager's unit. Like many of our other developments, Siskiyou Crossroads will have a community building consisting of community room with kitchen, service offices, and leasing offices. It is also a supportive housing committee, community, excuse me, and it is scheduled to be completed in July of 2023. Okay, and then last slide here. This is, oops, sorry. 
That's okay. Nope. Yeah. So this is just some pictures of um, some of our some of our amazing work, if you ask me. <laughs> um, since I don't have a pointer or there, and we don't have a laser, unfortunately, on this. Uh, this is a development in Ukiah that is 36 units. Yeah, actually. Which one? It, this well, is 32. Okay. Um, 32. <clears throat> yeah. Um, this is just the interior of one of our units. And look at my finger can actually reach. Not really. Laundry. <laughs> um, those are pictures of our laundry facilities that we provide. Um, this is this last picture over here is a shot from one of our community rooms as they are furnished with you know, spaces for people to come together, build community, um, invite their families, you know, have a birthday party, whatever it is. Um, this another development, and one of the reasons I chose this picture is because it shows the our solar panel on our community building and just the lovely way we landscape things. And then the final picture is, you know, it's kind of funny to show a picture of a bed, but one of the reasons I included it is because I think it's important for people to understand that when somebody is coming out of homelessness, they don't have a lot of items, including furniture. They don't have kitchen items sometimes. And so for our supportive housing units, those units come fully furnished for the tenants. And then the last slide. So I'm, we're gonna leave this up. These will be your direct points of contact should you need them um, and want to write them down. Um, emails, phone numbers, names. Uh, these are the three lovely people I introduced from our CHTC that are here. And I just want to say, we as a community are a part of a chain reaction. We can't escape it. Housing is a problem for everyone. We can only work together to try and strengthen it. As the great Booker T. Washington so poignantly said, I have learned that success is to be measured not so much by the position that one has reached in life, but by the obstacles which they have overcome while trying to succeed. And those who are the happiest are those who do the most for others. Thank you so much, I appreciate you coming. And I apologize, I had to read all of it. That's just the way it goes, it was long. Um, now I'm going to um, bring Rebecca Nielsen, our Director of Property Management, up, and Angie Figueroa, Director of Development, and Scott Abbott from the County, Program Manager of Mental Health Students, I'm sorry, Services and Housing, <laughs> to answer your questions. And I will kind of um, address, I will, you know, point you essentially to kind of filter how it comes through. Excuse me, first question, timeline. When is this supposed to happen? Give us an idea of what is going on. Do um, Okay, so we have officially obtained funding for this development, so we're expecting to start construction within the next couple of weeks. We have our uh, building permit approvals, and we have all the associated items needed. Oh, excuse me. I'm going to ask this just once. Do we have a piece of paper I think you owe it to these people. Myself, you owe it to them. I would expect to at least have a piece of paper and we have an outline and maybe a website that would have that information so they can actually show. So I'll leave it at that. Can I ask a quick question? How many of you came tonight because you received a flyer in the mail? If you don't mind by raising your hands no, to no, show me. No, I got one. Okay. Okay. Um, yes. So I can. I have paper. I will come to you and provide some information for you. I, as far as a flyer, we did not bring something of that nature. Yeah. How did the people get the flyers? Why did just a couple people get the flyers? You know, this is. I. Um, I had actually requested an area around the development. Um, of a third of a mile around the development to send flyers to. I'm right next door. We never have I, yes, I apologize. Um, this was unexpected an error. We received a list of a thousand people, and it was very hard to determine who was where. Why not just send it to all thousand people? Well, because some of them were in, like in Alaska. They're property owners in other areas. Well, I mean, was that sure there's a line that started at five thirty? So I apparently. Yeah. 
Where was it posted? Uh, community Facebook pages mostly. I got a, a notification from my uh, district supervisor okay. to start at 5 30. I don't want to be late, so I don't know who you all are or what transpired. Okay. I'd be happy to talk with you afterwards. No question. Um, was there ever any opportunity for the community members to be involved as far as any meetings like this? Obviously, you got the permits and the funding and the buildings going in two weeks. Wow. Yeah, we Holy smokes. I had no idea. I heard about this potential project a few years back, and then it's pretty much kind of ghosted any sort of, um, you know, say, social avenue to um, receive any sort of information regarding the project. So were there any meetings a year, two years, three years ago no. No. regarding the public and the community about this? No. 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 For any insight or feedback or anything? No. Or is this, this is it right here? So we, the county has been holding meetings um, on behalf of the funding that was associated with this development and these have been taking place um, I believe Scott, correct me if I'm wrong, but since back in 2018, we had MHSA and those place like hope meetings about what the funds would be utilized for, and these are the funds that are that we are using to fund this development. Um, so that was we have more with the county directly, wouldn't you say? Well, it was also formally? presented by the board of supervisors. Yeah. Yeah. Well. yeah. Okay. Okay. So nothing to do with the public. Okay. No. Oh no, pub board of supervisors is a public meeting, sir. Thank you. Can, can I ask you why Sequoia was not informed? is because of an assembly bill that was utilized for this development due to the population that's being served. It's AB 2162, and it allows for supportive uh, housing developments to be exempt from CEQA. So that is the reason why, why and it's because of specific requirements that our development meant Everybody that we were able to bypass that. Everybody in any, anything they're building anywhere. I completely yeah. understand. Yes, and I she did it because she could stop community involvement, and she was the head of the CDD, the CDD, Community Development Department. And she talked to you guys, and she said, I'm going to stop it. I, and that way, community won't be involved. I can assure you that from our point of view, this absolutely had nothing to do with community involvement. That's why it was merely just for developing the affordable housing development. It, we were not in any way attempting to not involve you all. Why wasn't the community informed better than two weeks before this meeting? Yeah. I, if you don't mind, I just want to address one more thing about your question. Um, some of the processes of getting affordable housing built in our state, they have, you know, there are, um, they want it built, so they create pathways for it to be built. And why would you do it when you've got nothing but old people in the neighborhood right across the street in front of the RD Park with a beautiful home park with all old people. There's only resorts and RD Park. There's no reason to have all this commotion in this one small area, and you know it's going to be held to pay for all the little resorts and people. I know they collect the check. 
when I collect the check, ignored all my calls to advocate on behalf of tenants. So, um, I, I can really speak to that. Concern. I can speak to that. So, how what, long have you been with this company? I've been with RCHDC for 14 years. So, I would go ahead so just really quick and give you a that ignored my calls because you're the property management person. So, my name is Susan it's, it's actually not fair to kind of blame me for something that you Well, could be. it's the company. So do you want me to respond or? Yeah, I would like to hear okay. a response so, for your current lack of management. Yeah. Well, first of all, I'd like to share with you that North Shore Villa is an independent living situation. So no. if residents have- Would you manage Excuse me, I'm sorry. I'd appreciate it if you guys can um, just hold your conversations a little bit, just because it makes it hard for other people to hear. Thank you so much. So in the property management arena, I'm sure you've seen on the news where it's very, very, very difficult to find people that want to work these days. Every single agency in this whole United States is lacking employees. Okay? For eight years? You, you, I'm sorry? For eight years? For eight years? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I can- One year of body management? Yeah, eight I years. actually, that, that's not true. We've not had no management uh, there for eight years. This is a whole no I, documentation. I think what she's saying is, excuse me for butting in, yeah. by the big mouth, um, is that if there's already concerns about projects that have already exist, then what, how can you reassure us that this project is going to be any better than some of the other ones that aren't really going very well or don't seem to be managed properly? What, what I can tell you is that North Shore Villa is a completely different can type of community up? than this property is. Okay? This up. is a supportive permit. Speak louder. Or you can step forward on yeah, the come forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, North Shore Villa is a senior property. It is independent living. We are not responsible for supporting our residents. However, we do have a resident service coordinator. She, I'm, do you live there? Um, I have close people that live there, and I, as I said, been trying to advocate well, for them and the documenting everything because it's just been impossible to get a response. And, you know, if you're not following the HUD rules for, you know, your tenancy, then well, I, well, I, I just want people to be aware of what you expected. Yeah. Like, so, you know, screening. I, I don't believe that you that know. should be discussing the management of North Shore Villa and this, because I, I understand what you're saying. I just, yeah. yeah. Because people need like to know what to do. You're comparing apples and oranges. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to give you my card if you want to give me a call directly. We need to discuss the specific North Shore Villa that situation. your voice now. I'm sorry, you're, you're speaking on I've left many messages with your company, your department, people in charge at RCC. Okay, so I'm going to take the next question over here. Why I'm don't gonna... you answer this, gals? Okay, go ahead. Sure. I did not trust you. It's been a minute, so if you could repeat the question, that would be great. I was just curious why the community wasn't informed until two days before. Like, people that live directly around this area have gotten no notifications that there was anything being built there. I bought this property thinking that my children were going to be able to access and use that orchard because that's what I was told. And then now there's going to be mentally ill people living there and drug addicts living there. You know? There's barely any cops that come around here because they're so stretched thin over the entire county. You know, like, there's no hospital in our community. Like, how is this going to benefit anybody? I mean, yes, I am totally for building housing to house at-risk populations 100%. But where's the resources? The resources are too far away. So there will actually be supportive offices right inside. Um, behavioral health people with, have a nurse, with people in there all the time. I don't need a nurse or a doctor. There is an on site property manager there that, yes, is there all the time. And this person is qualified to handle mentally ill people? Yeah. Yeah. And we're, we'll let Scott address that. Ill. One person can handle 20, 20 units of mentally ill. Yeah. Behavioral health. Can you speak about that? Yes, 20 units of those would be for people that are 
deemed to be mentally ill. But they will be for people that can also live independently. You know, this isn't this isn't a facility or you know some kind of um, lockdown place for for dangerous people. This is a place for people that have mental illness, mental illness that has prevented them from being able to find find housing. You know, and you'll have staff. We part of the agreement in the, in this plan is that they are. This is a partnership with behavioral health. Where behavioral health offers the supportive service. You know, you mentioned this is supportive housing. The supportive part of that comes from behavioral health. So you will have staff that will be assigned to every every resident there. It will be providing ongoing services. Is that on site? They will be there on site. That's why there's there's there's. Well, she said property manager. <coughs> That's a lot. Manager is going to live there. Behavioral health staff will be these people's homes. Will be coming to visit there, but they won't be on staff daily. No, they will be they coming. They don't. They, will they be don't have an on-site. They will be coming out daily. To oh, work they have. Where? Uh, they have, excuse me. They have residents. Their services offices on site specifically for uh, behavioral health to meet with their. But clients. there's nobody there all day. So there's an on-site property manager who will live on the property. The property right? manager is yeah. not in the health care. Correct. Right. But they will have access to behavioral health. So they can call and say, oh, hi, I need help. Can you come in within a week? Right. Maybe they're, you know, within a day. In addition, the property managers are trauma-informed, if you're familiar with that term. It's a great term to familiarize yourself with if you aren't. And it's essentially understanding the populations of people that we serve and what tri type of trauma that they've been to through so that we can understand their mental health needs a little bit better and address them from a compassionate place. Um, that we have a resident services coordinator that is designated to each supportive services site and, uh, excuse me, supportive services <coughs> housing development. And they help to coordinate care with other service providers in addition to the county if there is other services needed, such as substance use disorder treatment, and you know um, access to additional health care, ride share, that kind of thing. Now, the gal over here, and I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. That's going to be in charge of this. So Michelle. Michelle, yes. Where do you live, Michelle? I live in Lucerne. Okay, so you will be here all the time? No. No, no I uh, manage all, I oversee all the properties of Lake County for our CCC and I just Loud and loud. I have three sites in Ukiah as well. So I'm back and forth between Ukiah and Lake County. But the, she lives in the same community you all live in. That we'll be sharing the same community. Our, our, our chief operations officer lives in the same community as well. So into a community that we're not familiar with you know we, we understand that we have also corporate staff that live right in the same community now where do these clients come from so they're they're all in yes so so everyone that we plan to populate to populate this property with lives in your community already they live already in this community not specific to Lucerne but Lake County. This is not necessary. Are these unhoused people? I'm sorry, please, excuse me. Are these unhoused people currently? Yeah. Uh, that's correct. And just to further expand on what Rebecca just said, um, this is a, I used to be a grant writer before I came over to RCHDC, so I have like these weird facts that I just like to spit out. Um, in California, specifically, 70 to 80 percent of the population of homelessness in any one community is actually within, they are from that community. Their roots are in that community. They have resources in that community. They may not have a house, but then they are, you know, they have people that can help support them in getting a shower or getting a ride in somewhere that they need, that kind of thing. So if I may, I'd just like to kind of introduce just a little bit. So I, like I said earlier, I have been with RCHDC for 14 years. In my tenure here, we have brought to fruition around 10 of these housing um, communities with the same exact population. In every single one of the communities that we, including Ukiah, we have three of them there right now. We just opened up another one there. The community members are having, have the same exact concerns, okay? 
And I'm not here to tell you that this property is going to be perfect because there will be issues. There are issues everywhere. And I know that when you go to the store here, you see these issues anyway, okay? What we're doing is we're trying to give everyone, because this is a human situation, okay? These are human beings, okay? And every human being deserves a roof over their head, somewhere to be safe so they can stabilize, okay? So but also, but also to share, to share, to add a lot of that. Excuse me. I just said she had a good point. We do too. Okay. Have right to have a right town a roof and a safe community. And Correct. we are invested in this neighborhood with our hard earned money and careers. Absolutely. And, you know, raising families here. I've been here over 40 years. My grandpa used to bring me and my brother and my cousins to this orchard when I was between five and seven years old to climb up the walnut trees and pick walnuts and learn how to, what the farmers do and what it's all about. So you know, I've been in this nice, quaint little town for over 40 years. It was a lovely, lovely town at one point in time. That has changed drastically over the past 20 years. Now you speak of most of these people are within the community. I would gladly debate that, okay? Because there may be a small percentage of that are actually community members. You know, like I said, I've been here over 40 years, okay? Most of these people are transplants into our county from other areas. I know that personally because for one, you know, I'm not necessarily biased against them or judge them or think they're all bad. I go down to the park, I go fishing, bring my wife, we walk the beach. You know, so I talk to them, I interact just to be peaceful and nice. And you know, some are peaceful and nice, some are disgruntled, don't want anything to do with you. You know, some are just way high on drugs. Um, so your statement about most of them are community members is, is very false, ma'am. I would just like to correct you on that based on well, personal interactions okay. and seeing the populace of the homeless and transients grow exponentially in just the last five years. It's been a tremendous growth. So, um, so let me but that's concerning. We never knew that this was actually going to be a rehabilitative no, it's, type of, it's, well it's not even rehabilitated. No, okay, excuse me, I misspoke. misspoke. So I don't think any of us ever realized that this was going to be, you know, um, for the homeless, nothing against the homeless, people with mental illness or drug problems. You know, um, there's big time lack of housing for the common folk. <coughs> that just work and are trying to raise their kids and send them to school. I mean, if there's an apartment for rent or a house, there's 40, 50 applications in the first two days. That's how competitive it's become around here. That's another thing I've observed over being here for well over 40 years, you know? And that's just the reality of it. So, the, so, so yeah. let me just share this one thing. So again, this. This is not our first rodeo. We completely understand there are three types of homelessness, okay? Those transients, those people who just have become unhoused, and those people who are chronically unhoused, okay? Not every one of them falls in this situation, but I'll tell you one thing. The people that you're most concerned about, the transients that you talk about, they don't want to be housed. They won't apply here, and they won't live here because they don't want to be housed. They want to do what they do. And, you know, okay, fair enough. That assumes to another question. What are the qualifications for these people to get in? Thank you. Thank you for, for asking that question. So well, every everyone that lives there will be will have a credit and criminal background check. Okay? They have to pass a criminal I can tell if he's having a They have to pass a criminal background check. Anyone with violent criminal background check will not be living there. Anyone who has um, been recently within the past one year has any sort of drug related um, activity on their criminal background check will not be housed there. They will be rejected unless they can provide something. They will be rejected. They have a right to appeal. And within that appeal process, they would have to prove that they've, they've um, gone into a program and that they have graduated from that program. 
Okay, that's uh, a little Any more sex reassuring. Sex, sex offenders stay. are absolutely out. No. There will be no sex offenders allowed to be there. That's an absolute key. Good question. Well, can I have one other question? I'm going to pause you, sir, just a moment because the art, this gentleman from the press has been oh, yeah, sure. had his hand raised for a long time. Yeah, oh, I did. Go right ahead. I think you stated that that there's, you have, it's not your first rodeo. Can you, can you speak a little louder? Sorry. I think this, uh, I'm sorry. Rebecca. Rebecca, Rebecca uh, suggested that this is not their first rodeo. So the question is what are the impacts going to be on EMS for this region? impacts for emergency medical assistance. Police, well, fire, emergency. emergency. They, they will be as, reduced. As information from their other projects? Yeah. Correct. And, and what I, I, I was kind of sharing that with you, each one of our, I don't like to call them projects because I just think that Sorry. dehumanizes, but that's okay, you can call them projects. Um, but each one of these communities, they, you know, they have drastically reduced the impact. So let's just think about this. Let's just say one of y'all's family members is suffering some sort of crisis, okay? But your emergency medical can't come because they're dealing with someone on the street, okay? What about, I read um, not too long ago, there was a person found um, deceased um, in, on your street out here, somewhere in the area. I don't Which one? There's good men that happens, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, there was three over by yeah. East Market just last year. Uh, from the fentanyl methamphetamine dealer, which a lot of people can attest to, and all sporadic, you know, locations throughout the town, but don't mean to interrupt. That's okay. So you actually lead me to my next question. Okay. How many of these units are adjacent to highways? Are just one. Adjacent. Oh, oh. That's how many of our properties? How many yeah, of these? You can give us a minute to think about that one. Because um, this is unusual, right? It's, it's, right on the highway. How many Rica. feet from the highway is it? That's that's a development question. So how many feet is it? Um, I don't know the exact number of feet, but I know there's just a home uh, north of us before we hit the highway. I have one, one that's built literally on the entrance. entrance. Uh, on the entrance to Highway 101. Feet? In a little armpit there. We have one property that's it's literally right there. And do you find increased impacts being in proximity to a state highway? Impacts. We were just trying to, we were sitting here discussing it. Yeah, so. you know what, that's a really good question. And yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, so it is your first rodeo. Investigate that. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I don't want, it's not a question that we've been, we've been, uh, that we've asked, been asked before. I well, mean, I can answer you off the top of my head. It's one of the we, primary questions that the community has been asking. Right. Um, for about a year since this actually came to light, so I'm after Mary Darby made it a ministerial project and avoided the entire public input process, that's kind of the way the community is familiar with this project. And that's how we made it a ministerial project. Table that question yeah. and get back to you with it. Mary's already yeah. said, said it. Well, we, we don't, Mary, she's not with us. I don't she's, know. She's if, gone. You, if you can give me your information or whoever would like to know the answer to that question, yeah. I have a notebook. I can get that information. Send this I'll send it to everyone then. If everyone's interested, we can get you that information. Yes, please. My, sign my question would be if we objected to this going in, could we stop it? No. 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 Okay. It's was the, there the, ever an opportunity? Well, is there ever an opportunity? Yes, this is, this is, no, is the zoning of the pro parcel okay. allows all of it. the development as a by right. It was originally it was going to be low income housing. I don't know. And That's then it was snatched up. My it just, it's still is, it just, man, it still is low income housing. Yeah. Now, the same question over here, if I can well, add. I guess, I guess one so of the things so I would like to, well, I'm, I'm curious, if anybody in the room has somebody that, in their life that has had substance use disorder issues yeah. or mental health issues, yeah. and yeah. I'm not, listen, I am absolutely, I don't know you. Every probably has a family member that has suffered from mental illness or substance abuse. Look at your statistics on that. We all feel it. Yeah, we do. We all feel it. 
none of us are saying don't house the homeless or don't help the I know. people that are addicted, but it's like we as a community should have an input on where so those things go. Can, what can we do to help? Nothing, that's what we, we want to know. We don't have a choice. That, we don't have a choice. So I, I want you to know that no one in this room had anything to do with that. You know, there's a playground right next door. There's a ball field. Perfect. Perfect. And the children that live there will be happy and will have a place to play. We're right in between the playground and this. Okay. Yes. Okay. Let's get back to the original question, and then I have, que I have two questions, please. I know a lot of people want to input. The timeline, we can't do anything about that. Your project's going in, guys. It's, it's going in. What's the timeline? We start construction in a couple weeks? And when is the finished uh, property? What's the goal to get it finished? At the end of the summer of next year. Okay, summer 2024. And then you'll have it start populating it and doing your going to uh, population. Okay, second question back on the population or the people that you will apply. Uh, and you have other properties, and you have other property managers overlooking these. What are the rules and regulations for like drug use, alcohol use? Do you guys allow cigarette smoking on your properties? So, also a really good question. So, there will be no smoking in the units. No smoking in the units. If you smoke inside of your unit, you won't be housed. We have zero tolerance for that. And you have a maintenance person that will be hired to go around and pick up all the butts. That's all correct. The trash. You guys are. Yep. We so there's two different things. One thing I I personally feel that we need a smoking area on property. Okay. One area where they can go to smoke. Okay. It's contained. We're, we need to see how many people are going to smoke because it has to be ADA compliant. There's okay. a lot. There's a lot of. How about the drug use and alcohol use? Do you monitor that? Or okay. Can't, or you can't. So, so we. That's we not controlled. It's just like any other apartment. We we can't tell people what they can and cannot do inside their apartment. But I can tell you that we they can't sit. Okay. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, yeah. Well, we have a big meth use problem in this county, and it's really big and really? and uh, really bad. I'm not saying that's going to be bad at your property. So. And, and they're right. The sheriff's department has all we get from them is low staff. Uh, extra, you asked them, oh, we had a meeting recently. A lot of you were there, and they asked for extra patrol. It's nothing really. I was trying to just communicate with the community. I asked for an extra patrol yesterday, and the dispatcher was rude to me, trying to argue. This has nothing to do with you guys. I'm just telling you what happened with me on this issue. They're trying to argue with me about why you should have an extra patrol at 3:30 in the morning. And then she said she was up at 3.30, too. I said, well, you're not outside making a lot of noise. So uh, hopefully you can control or have a way of understanding our, our we don't want a, a cluster of drug use in that nor, nor community. Nor to be. Nor to be. If you are caught with methamphetamines on the property. Or needles or anything else. You, you don't get to do all that. Okay. Be, but but please, remind, please remember one thing. This, the, 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 uh, the no place like home units. 15 of them? 20. 20 of these units, they are for people who are experiencing some sort of mental illness or homelessness. In the event that they are self-medicating with any sort of illegal, even marijuana, is this is a federal property, you don't get to do that, okay? So if that is, if we can prove someone is doing that, we will take action to have them removed. But remember, we have to do it properly. But also, this is also a safe place for this type of um, uh, population to get stabilized. So if someone is self-medicating, we have to give them a chance to stabilize. I'm not saying they get to do meth in their apartment because I'm not saying that that's and see, and that's, that's the yeah. one nice thing of, as opposed but to they need to get this, stabilized. this regular low-income housing is because we'll have behavioral health staff that's there that goes there and works with the people, they'll be able to address those type of situations on their arrive. If it was just like, you know, Standard low income housing, no one would be able to go in there. Isn't that voluntary though? Do these people have to have those means or can they just say, no, I don't want your help, I'm just going to take the house? It's no. No. They, they have to undergo counseling, whatever you want to call it. Right, right. No, they, that's, uh -uh. not from everything I've read in the government regulations. They, they, it is voluntary, but to get in there, yeah. they have to be you know, known. Participating in the program. Right. We have to know them. We have to be working with them before they're, they're put in there. I want to hear more about how you guys are going to manage like, these people in their crisis, which are 
you can have someone in the room. All we have, we have uh, crisis teams that are available 24-7 already. Talk on the phone if you can. We're talking on the phone or we're, we're at the hospital, but we're also doing um, mobile crisis, which is developing for this next year. Um, we also do outreach. Have you seen our outreach van that drives around? Well, how many people do you employ that you have that can go out and do these things? So, um, about 11 o'clock at night. Yep. So Guys right. flipping out, whatever the case may be, having a mental breakdown, yep. so found a bat, he's out in the parking lot, busting windows, now he's walking down the road toward the apartments where families and kids live. What do we do then? Because there's three patrols, sheriff patrols, yep. for, the um, in the whole whole county. County. for the whole county at any given time. So we already know that's going to be Zero. A half an hour at the earliest, maybe an hour. And that's just the reality. So how, how is that going to work? When you have the people that are going to be housed there, aren't those kind of people that are going to be killing each other? We're not talking about violent people. I yeah, you may. I may. I was standing, I went to um, Grilling Island the other day. On Friday, I went there for lunch. Okay. Right the street, okay? While I was in there, a woman came by with a vodka bottle and smashed the windows. Yeah, That's there you go. We can't control that. We've we got that all over the East Moose Yard already. We can't control that. What we're trying to do is find someone somewhere for people that do want to be housed and for a safe place. But I also wanted to share that I myself am a mental health um, first aid instructor, and the property manager will also be trained in mental health. State. Okay, so when some to answer your question earlier, when someone is experiencing a crisis, the property manager, no matter what time of day, Monday through Friday, eight to five is their uh, their hours. But if someone's experiencing a crisis, they're expected to go out and do what they can to de-escalate to get them into the same place. So, and then while they're there, they're being so there's protocol. I understand Correct. how realistic it is that it will work efficiently. Is a to be determined. It's, it's not perfect, and I'm not. I'm not going to yeah, stand here and tell you it's going to be perfect. I'm not going to beat it down. So anyway, I got one to say. But go ahead. She's raising her hand. And you know what? There's a lady over here. She's had a little bit behind it. Could you outline for me what kind of security is going to be in place? Just we don't have security. Oh, okay. cameras. <laughs> yeah. so you have I mean, there are there's, there's they, cameras. They call out, and there's this. Team of 20 people that do what? Behavioral health. Behavioral health. Like social workers, right? Thanks. You said you were building uh, other units yeah. exactly like this. Yeah. Already, how many of them have 50% mentally? You know, That's I'm really point. glad you asked me that because I actually am just on my way home. Actually, I'm not even going home. I live in Willits. I drove here from Corning today. We're housing and populating um, a property just like this, and it's amazing, and I'm sorry that you all can't feel what I feel. When you're giving someone, I, I, can, I can attest that I gave someone, a woman, a keys where she had been in a really bad situation. She now has a safe place to raise her family and her children. The, the look on their children's face when they saw they had their own bedroom, was immeasurable, it was amazing, okay? So I started to say earlier that a lot, of the, a lot of the communities that we do serve, everyone has had the same exact questions and same concerns, but I am gonna tell you, I am here to tell you, and I am very truthful, I'm all honest able over here for a reason, that most of the concerns do not come to fruition. It is not gonna be the monster that you all think it's going to be. But all your projects in Lake County, uh, are they all 50-50? No, no, no. We have one um, property, Bevins Court, in Lakeport, that, in Lakeport which is all chronically mentally ill. Um, ten, ten units. Ten units. So none of the other ones have 50% mentally ill? Not in Lake County, no. So no. That's more well, that, industrial it, area, right? Would you say on Bevins? So it's right the across area? the street from a senior property. Yeah. yeah. Our senior property. Okay. And okay. there's also a family property right down the street. 
is in your apartments, and yeah, uh -huh. no, I know the area very well. Yeah. So do they yeah. have on-site people for mentally ill? I'm sorry? Do they have on-site help for mentally ill? Yes. Behavioral health? Is that where your office is? Yeah. Not my office, but... There is an office there for behavioral health. Well, why aren't they going to have one here? Then? They are. They are. You didn't say that. No, they, that, that was one part of the yeah. presentation. Yeah, there, there's going to be an office right here that will... Um, it's, it's, it's not, it's an office space. Oh, there's a space, it's not a man. Right. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, it'll, it'll be man. Man, woman, woman, it'll be... So it'll be there 24 hours a day? 24? No. What, what are the hours? 8 to 5, Monday to Friday. And I, I have an additional question. So, behavioral health is staffing each of these facilities. Yes? Both of them, you mean? Both. The, the ones in Lake County. I've, I've yeah, heard of both, two so both, far. Both, there's one right now. So what are the fiscal impacts for behavioral health? How do you mean? How do you pay for that? It's like we do it for all of our services. Uh, you like got to speak up, buddy. Like we do it for all of our services. With, with state funds from Medi-Cal. I'm not sure what you're... I'm just, I'm just curious what the impact, I mean, if you, you're the director of behavioral health? No, I'm not, I'm the director of mental health. Um, so, mental health Services Act. And so do you do budgets? Mm -hmm. So what's the impact in your budget? It's just a matter of staffing. And we have staffing. What, what we do at Behavioral Health is we, we have a community, or community action treatment model which is our, you know, we spend more folk time sending our folks out into the community to treat people as opposed well to having them come in to, to the, um, to our, our two clinics. Trying to get something very essential here. <clears throat> Will this project increase your budget? Will it increase our budget? Yeah. No. No. So you won't be able to staff it full time. We can, we can assign staff there. But what about the other facilities? I mean, you see what it's, I'm saying? The, remember, the clients that are that are going to be living there are already exist within our system. So it's you know it's 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 just they're going to have a place to live, in, you know. So they're already being being treated by. So our, you may actually re, 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 experience a, a cost reduction as a result of that. Yes, yes, that's that's a good point because right now. You know, we we spend a lot of time on you know just helping people um, with our with our full service partnership program helps um, assist people with housing in in very expensive housing where where we assist with that and so this would you know because this is low income housing which is as you know short in in Lake County um, it's a place where that would that would definitely save save money. Yes, they have to pay 30% of their income to house it. That's correct, right? Okay. Yes. Now, let, let's go back to that just for a minute. Only the the, uh, the 20 mental health units pay 30% of their income. Everybody else pays um, the, uh, the tax credit allocated rents, whatever that is for the year. The government's yeah, determined. I'm getting sorry. Getting tax credit? Tax credit allocation. Yeah. Every year they, they change it. Every county, it's different. So what is, what is the cost of that? I don't know what it is right off the top of my head in Lake County, because I'm in Tehama County right this minute. It's a question of, you know, how can people afford it? I mean, it's, it's something still affordable, right? Correct. Yes, it's still affordable. It all depends on the unit makeup. So a whole different time. Uh, I was informed, is there going to be a wall that goes east to west, north to south on that back property? and on? I've, I've been told there's going to be an eight-foot block wall that goes around your, your property. That is so, so my property borders the Walnut Grove right here. So right now, all there is is my gate and a fence. So you're telling me that that's all that's going to be when you guys build these apartments that separate? There's not going to be a retaining wall or anything to keep these people from going up and down? We will have fencing. We will not be yeah. Wall of any sorts like so that. what so type of this? I, I would have to check that and get back to you. I don't know exactly what type has been designed, but I know that we have a fence. So the so, beautiful part about the housing, though, is they don't need to go under your property because they have a place to be. Okay. 
I know the gentleman that lives right here, and he also borders the property. His renters are right alongside your property. So when you start construction, are they, if these people work at night, are they going to have to listen to equipment all day long? They don't work at night. You're not going to have any kind of sound barrier or anything like that, just whatever fence. I, I suppose you're going to put in a chain link fence. Is it going to be a decorative fence? What kind of fence is it going to be? During construction, they will I mean, be a chain link fence. Uh, once it's completed, it's going to be a different type of fence. I will there be some kind of sound barrier on it or no? On the fencing? On the fencing, yeah. No. Nope. Okay, so when you are complete, what kind of fence? Uh, that's what I'm trying to tell you. I don't know exactly what type of fence you will have once oh, it's complete. I'd have to get back to you. But you know what? Let's, let's talk about that. If that's something that the community is interested in, maybe that's something that we can look at, you know, in Well, the just budget. put yourself in his shoes. I, I, I am. a beautiful place I, in Willis. I totally now, am. This no, place I, I don't have a beautiful place right in Right next to your house, that's adjacent. Right. Okay, so... Put yourself in issues. I, I understand I, his perspective. I, I totally am, and that's why I said, well, let's figure out something. If that's what you know, we're looking at, let's if we're going to build a fence, let's figure out what, about what the kind of fence that it would be best. Right through that. I'm the, sorry. What about the creek that runs right through that property? That's a question. We won't be building anywhere near that. So, uh, are you staying east of the creek? Yes, we're staying east. We have a 50 foot setback from that creek. So, we'll so you're staying 50 foot this way yes. from the creek. So you're not going to be on that side of the creek. So will there be a fence before the creek or after the creek? Where do you want the fence? On the east side of the creek. Do I have that input? Yes, you can provide that input. That's what, yeah. we're, that's why we're here. What is well, I have a cul-de-sac there right now. It'd be nice to still have my cul-de-sac. <laughs> I, I'd yeah. like to write that down just so I have kind of... Yeah, I mean, this. if the fence is on the east side of that creek, great. Rebecca, did you ask? Did you answer the woman's question? Raise your hand. I did. She's the postmaster. Do you want to know what our post office was? And the stronger fence you can put in there, the better. Okay. Right, John? Yeah. So, fence on the east side. East side of the creek. Thank you. Because if you're building that, I don't want people. Because there's going to be traffic trying to come in through there. Just to steal all your guys' construction machines, for one thing. And that's what's going to happen. Oh, yeah. you know, they're going to try coming in there and they're going to try stealing any goddamn thing that ain't locked down, bolted down, or tight down. And I don't want them coming through my property. I don't have a big chain link, you know, stop anybody and everybody fence. If I need to put one, I can, but, you know, but I think you guys, I would hope that you guys are going to have some kind of a defense barrier while this stuff's going on so we don't have to worry about people coming in. In the middle of the night. No, I that, that, okay. that doesn't matter. That's not going to stop people from no. stealing. You know that. Well, well, well. Say, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. There are a couple yes. people that have had their hand raised for a little bit and put them down. So I, just, I noticed that you guys, yes, well, that's why I just want to make sure that they get a big attention. Yep. Yes, please. Yes. Me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Well, um, I just want to say that I'm in support of your project. Um, I think it's a great idea to help uh, the community. We're talking about senior citizens that need housing because they don't have a lot of money to pay for their apartments uh, with the rent as high as it is. That's such a wonderful thing. We have senior, um, we have such great services for our senior community. Um, I think the park down there, somebody mentioned, would be great for the kids. Um, you know, could maybe change the atmosphere around here and maybe we can have some baseball games for the kids. And I also hear the concerns that people are having, you know, your fears. You know, what kind of people are these that we're, we have to deal with and all the stealing and the drugs and, um, and, and the resource coordinator is somebody who can come in and provide these people with the resources that they need to get help. They might have uh, an AA meeting. The church up here has had AA meetings and NA meetings. And so it's a, it's just a huge, it's gonna affect the community and hopefully it's gonna be something that's really positive. So I'm just really proud of you. I'm, I'm just so glad you're gonna do this. And I think once everybody gets over being afraid of some of the things 
that we have in our hearts that you'll probably like it too. I think it's a, a good humane gesture, definitely. Um, I think a part that bothers a lot of people is that it, it kind of feels like a sneak attack, right? It, yeah. So I just got notice online, by fluke, I just saw it, about this meeting regarding this. Right. I heard something about development years ago. It had to proceed three to four years ago. Oh, we were hearing about, about this. And then all of a sudden we have this meeting, two weeks we're breaking ground. No secret review, no community involvement other than this, which is basically, hey, it's happening, people. That's it. That's that. What kind of questions can we answer to make you feel better? You know, that's really kind of the reality of it, being realistic. And I can see both sides, the humane side. That's all great and fine and well. There's so many humane issues in this county, this town, every town around this county that need to be addressed, this is, I don't know, this is good for the homeless and some mentally ill people, and you know, that's good, that's good, every little bit of help is good. What about the local community? I mean, no notification, that's the way, two weeks of breaking ground, no secret review? What, what I said earlier was, I still stand behind that. You're mad at the wrong people. We didn't do that, okay? I know that Jessica. Is it's not really mad. It's more disappointed dis and um, deceit. It feels morally deceitful. I, you know, ethically and morally, I, the way I, it's going about doesn't feel so good to On us. the other projects, <laughs> you notify people. So. Let me know because who would have notified Justin that's, mentioned that's, that's a question and a couple other people? I want to address what you're talking about because that's the same issue we had with the Deputy Secretary of Behavioral Health that came to the Rural County Representatives meeting that I had in Sacramento about three weeks ago talking about this very thing. Counties like Kings County, Alpine County, Calaveras, Inyo, uh, Tulare, Lassen, and Santa Barbara have these same projects where because of this AB2162 puts it in a position where local control is at, you know, we don't it's control local. Yes, and so yeah. that's the frustrating part, and I, it's not necessarily them that, you know, right. that did it, the circumvention of local control. That was our biggest issue. Um, and so in talking with Lynn a few times, the biggest thing that, we, that I've tried to implement is ensuring that there's, there is like a shall or a mandate or something of that nature for mental health services mm -hmm. on site. And so, uh, so just letting you know, it, it is frustrating when there's no local control like what you're talking about. So it is understandable for the community, and that's why they're upset because it, because it feels the way it does. But other counties say are saying the same thing. They're, they're upset, especially uh, my colleague Doug Bourbon, who said we're getting hammered by the community because these things are happening and it's out of our hands. So just giving you that insight. Thanks, CJ. The state. Maybe 2162. So it's a loop. That's what she's asking. Is this the only one that's going in now that we know of? Or is there going to be any more surprises? We, the one no more surprises. Or will we ever know this? We, I personally, RCHDC is involved in this. If it's in your community, I will personally make sure that they need it. Because this meeting, this meeting should have happened be way before. I agree. Years ago. Yeah. yeah. I can tell you that we've been trying to put this on for a couple of years. I mean, for these people, bought their yeah, property. But I also wanted to, I know we're coming into your community. Okay? That's the right thing. And what we, what we want to do is, we want to hear you. What can we do? Defense, that's a solution. We want to help you with that. Please, please share with us anything else that we can do to help you. No, yeah. Will you be that. using local contractors, or how does the contracting portion of the work work? Yes, the look, we have a general contra contractor that we utilize, and he does uh, use local contractors. I don't have that list with me of who he has. Oh, he's a local general he contractor? Um, he's project? not local, but he, what, we've used him in other pro uh, developments in Ukiah and the surrounding areas, and he always uh, works Where's with he from? Contractors. Just curious. Here we go. Okay, okay, because I'm a contractor in a different field, and I've gone after um, projects like this for my company, my employees, of course, right? And I didn't have a snowball's chance 
And this is from experience. I've been in the trades 27 years. I own a contracting specialized service business in Lakeport. We do work in residential and commercial buildings all around the county. So it's just a question to see if there's going to be opportunity for local contractors as a stimulus for the locals that live here, work here, pay their taxes, and all that. Right in this town. Our general contractor hires a local contractor. He bids things, everything out, plumbing, painting, the plumbing, the electrical. But isn't that already local. done though? Like all that's mapped out. <laughs> From my have... knowledge in construction, when you're this far, yeah. Yeah. you're groundbreaking. Yeah. Every yeah. one of your resources is mapped out from start to finish. Two weeks. Generally, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? He does have a list of contractors already, not for all trades, so I wouldn't be able to say which ones, but I know he has some already um, okay. that he reached out to. He received bids before we got to this point. Um, so he does have some, but he doesn't have all of them. If you're interested specifically in something, you can let me know and I can contact him. Is there any preference given to local contractors? Is there a preference? Preference? Yes. He has a list of them. Uh, that's, we don't, we can't enforce that ourselves, but we do work with them to see local contractors. At the end of the day, Though one of the big dictators is the budget itself, and we can't, it, we would like to go with local, but it's also going to depend on where they're going to fall. Is it considered the a state base. job? You know? So that's the, that's the issue it's, that we were sharing at the rural county representative, that there is no specific mandate for them to actually do this for local uh, contractors. That was the same right that we were all giving to this. Uh, Stephanie Welch about the same thing, oh. about the verbiage in some of these. Uh, yes. Okay. So, this may be a romantic piece of But the fact that they're willing to is a good thing right here. So, I okay. think if you, if you make this connection here. Yeah. Yeah. Right I see opportunity, potentially. You know, well, I got to ask, you know. Sir, so I have a question for you. Um, but, you know, we still have to have vendors while. After it's open, so I'm not sure what you specialize in. But we I specialize in flooring for 26 years here in the county. Well, yeah. I don't do. And I tried a couple other projects, like the one in the Oaks, that was a senior housing. I stopped by there right during groundbreaking. The general was out of um, by Reading there, and I was able to get a hold of him through several channels to get to him. <coughs> oh no! Oh no! That's he said to get picked a long time ago. And, okay, just curious, where's your flooring guys coming out? I'm just curious. Because for local, I think it'd be more efficient and economical, actually, for shipping, local vendors, not to have contractors drive three hours. So sensibly and logically, you know, it didn't make sense to me. But I understand how the big construction projects work, too, because I've been in construction. We have other projects in, in the area, so if you want to share your company with me, I'm, I'm happy to share. Yeah, no, that's fine. We, we need I just had a question. I just had that question. I was curious. What are you going to do with the western side of the creek, that little piece of property there? As of the moment, there's nothing planned. It's just going to stay undeveloped. As of now, yes. Will we be notified of that? <laughs> yes. Who's going to notify us? Are you? I will ensure that we do. <laughs> I'm glad you were able to attend. I apologize for that. And I will say it is highly unlikely that we're going to do anything with that vacant. It's more than likely just going to be vacant. And you'll leave the wall and the trees that are there on it? <laughs> yeah, we're not touching that. West side of the, we're not touching that. Okay. Is that yes. part of the the yeah. people being housed yeah. all from Lake County. So, Lake County Behavioral Health yeah. will, be, will be referring 20 That's the whole idea. Yeah. You know, as you know, we need housing here in, in Lake County. Really yes, bad. we do. For our folks. General, general housing. Too, right? We do. General housing. Maybe a little more. Maybe more. And and so favoritism is one of the of course. This is one of the rare opportunities we have of actually you know, building more housing. Yeah. 
On that note, uh, has there been any other places comparable or exactly like this built in Lane County thus far? I know about the one in Lakeport that's been over there for several years. Yeah. I've actually done flooring in that facility. Um, so very aware of that. That's a very small complex, very, very that's small it. complex. That's it. Um, so are there any others like what's going in here in Lake County right now? There's, there's some here. What's called board and carriers. Those are, those are designed for, for folks that need more assisted living. Okay. So this is this is like a step below that, you know, where people can live in the tenant room. And we do have, well, actually here in Nice, you're probably aware of it. It's in Nice. It's on Manzanita. Oh, yeah, we're aware of that. Yeah, monthly monthly area, yeah. Okay, so that's an important area. There's a higher level. Okay. okay. This is a lower level. Okay. <laughs> so to answer my question, this would be the first one in Lake County? More or less? The homeless and the mentally ill in one great complex? Well, one, one complex. Yeah, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, there's two For the same purpose or general no, public? No, it's for, it's for low income. Oh, okay. So, yeah, and my thoughts are, I'm just trying to wrap my mind around it, right? Logistically, this whole big county, you know, there's sore spots in every town in this county. I would say the south end is probably the worst. Let's be realistic. Probably is. But, you know, Lucerne, Nice, not too far behind it for the past decade plus. It's gotten bad. So why, logistically, were there any other options? And it is just for my own question. I don't make a waste time, guys. Um, why was this spot chosen specifically? Were there other alternatives? <laughs> Who had to say the vote in that the um, alternative? alternative? Yeah, because we this. purchased that lot over 20 years ago, and it's just been sitting there, and we've been paying on it, and paying on it, and paying on it. RCHDC. Yeah. What was the initial? motive for purchasing so, that lot so probably our, houses right our um, you know what? i don't know our original ceo oh, okay. that okay. founded our company actually yeah. purchased them and we've been we were trying to sell it for a while nobody wanted to buy oh. it so oh. um, but we have we have to mow it and all that kind of stuff <laughs> and all that okay. you, own, you own other undeveloped properties we do where where are they uh, that we own currently? Yes. Yes. In Lake County? Yes. We don't have those no. Lakewoods anymore? Oh, yes. Sorry. Yes, you're right. Yeah. Uh, yes, we own, I believe it is about 10 undeveloped parcels in... Um, in Lakewood. That's my question. What made the determination of this being the one? Okay, this is the one right here in East, next to Highway 20 on the same street as apartment complexes, right up the street from the bar. Yeah. This is perfect. <laughs> these are just I mean, these are have a sense of sarcasm, but these are real factors that are displayed. So I'm just curious. So we, we couldn't build over there because it's a housing. It's a subdivision. It's a single family home subdivision. So that falls into my next question. Are you familiar with those apartments and stuff that are there existing already? And if you are, what, how would you compare what you're building to the way that, for, as far as people living there, you know, because I know some good people, I know some bad people living there. I think most people's concerns here is when they found out about the, the, the illnesses, you know, the people with the disorders and stuff. That's, you know, so, you know, I, I'm all for building, just like she said, the mother, you know, the mother got in there with her well, kids and shit. I'm not, I don't know about anybody else. I've never objected to something like that. But everybody I know that's got concerns now is because when it changed from low rental to then you added on the homeless and then and the bipolar and the schizophrenia, blah, blah, blah. Right. Well, this so. particular motor that I'm talking about was, um, she didn't have children for a while because she didn't choose a bed, you know, a yeah. different path. And this is a chance for her to reunify with her family. And I'm all for that. Right. So yeah, I am all for that. It's not just, yeah. 
you know, my tax money pays for that shit. So when you're doing stuff like that, I agree. I, and I'm all for it. Actually, it doesn't. Not for the housing here. No, the millionaire's <laughs> tax paid for it. I wrote it down. Yes. 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 That's what makes this So the millionaire's good. tax pays for these kind of facilities in a destitute town that's already run down with major drug problems and homeless problems. If you're getting that's any kind of tax, yeah, I understand the humane aspect as well. And I can respect that and appreciate that. But, um, gosh, the way you guys have gone about bringing this project to the table is way wrong. Beyond wrong. You don't have to apologize. Well, Did you do it all by yourself? No, I didn't. No, but there I, were several people, right? But so, I have passion enough. I'm not for mad at you or her or her. But I have passion enough for you. But and her. this process and the inconsideration for our community with any notification or consideration of the welfare of families and kids and people locally. None whatsoever. You know, that's. And I'll be honest, I'm pissed. But I'm trying to be calm and respectful and logical as well. You know, I just saw last week on my computer. Oh, well, meeting about what the hell? What did this come about? Oh my gosh! I built a property in Lakeport two years ago. Fortunate enough, my wife and I worked 17 years to save up to buy our property to build our warehouse and our store. We worked our butts off. Well, I had to go through a CEQA review, a biology report. They wanted to see if I had red green blackbirds on my property and my trees. And if I did, that would have inhibited me from building there. You know, so I, we went through the most scrutinizing process of just being able to get to where we finally got, yet you bypass all of that. I'm just, gosh, it's just so unfair and not fun. Okay, so you see what I'm saying? Let me share this with you. Uh, let me share okay, this with you. Okay, okay. I'll pipe down. When I came here, when we all came here, we didn't come here thinking that this was going to be a fun party. Okay? But you know what? We all stepped up to the plate because we knew that it wasn't going to be a good time. We all were angry and concerned. We had two options. We did not have this. I don't see your point. My point is, we came here because we, we care and we want to do something for your community. Because we didn't have to have this at all. You came here to start a ground break. Real estate. You're going to anyway. It does already I'm sorry? I feel like you had this property for 20 years. You couldn't unload it anywhere. And so this is the opportunity. Let's get the government involved. Let's. You're ruining you our life. I'm sorry you feel that way. So we have no compassion. What about you? Know, you're more cars are on the street. Do you think that? Oh, do you think about it? No, I'm not here to be down. Lakeshore, Old Hard right now. How many special, you said there's going to have some special needs people? What kind of special needs are we talking about? Like, is there going to be people on the spectrum or, like my son's autistic? Is that what your guys are aiming at? Is moving some of the units towards that? Because they really need that. If you can just let me interrupt you for one second. Sir, I see your hand back there. You don't need to sit. hold it. Let, I'll remember you. I'll come back to you as soon as this question is answered. Thank you so much. Yes, the special needs are, are mental illness. Oh, okay. illness. There's also um, for people that have developmental delays, such as people on the autism spectrum, will also be so that's a good thing because uh, there's housing needs for young adults with autism or on the spectrum is needed. My wife has a non-for-profit in this county called Vision of Hope Village, and our aim is to create housing for kids with that uh, on the spectrum and other disabilities. So if that's part of the plan, that's a great thing. These kids, are their parents die and they don't have any place to go. We do have 10 of the units that will be set aside for individuals um, or families with developmental disabilities, and they will be serviced by Redwood, Redwood Coast Regional Center. That's great. Thank you. Okay, Lynn. Thank um, you. I have a kind of longer term question. Okay, so part of the funding that you guys are getting is based on having half the units be for special, you know, addicts or homeless 
mentally ill, whatever. So is that a permanent stipulation for you to get money every year or you just get a chunk of money? You guys got a chunk of money from the government to do this project and you have to maintain those same number of available apartments for homeless for eternity or for a certain amount of time? Are you referring to the money for uh, developing or for the money for the services? No, I'm talking about, uh, I read lots of paperwork and uh -huh. it appears that the government and a lot of these funding projects are based, stipulated for certain types of people and for the so units. I think I can answer that. Okay. Is, is just, I mean, that's, that's, that's how it's set up. But say, for example, for some reason we didn't have 20 people we could refer into that, then those units could be opened up for, for those people that are low income housing, like the other 10 beds. Okay, so you, you don't stop getting money from the government based on that, you still get some other money? You get the, you get the money for the build it. Okay, so basically that lump of money was for building it, not necessarily for maintaining a certain I don't know how maintaining works. I don't know how the services work. I don't know how maintaining works. But the maintaining of it would just come from operations of uh, rent being paid for the development. I mean, legally, yeah. you know, is there stipulation that you have to have always at all times have the people be mentally ill or drug addicts? There, there is for one of the funding sources, there is a requirement, but if there are no individuals to Okay. Be housed, and then it will be open to anyone that is low income. Also, you said you mentioned 20 people that have mental illness, but in the paperwork it says uh, addicts or mentally ill, homeless, or at risk of being homeless. So, can it be a mixture? Can you have uh, 20 mentally ill people and no drug addicts, or can you have? You know, 17 drug addicts and twenty oh, mental health people. Oh, yeah. How does that work? There's nothing in the paperwork that says anything about drug addicts. Yeah. 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 It's a it's a <laughs> no, it does. It does say that in the. Um, I, I don't have the paperwork right here, but no place like home or whatever it's called. In that government stipulations, it does say, you know, you can't hold that against them. And if they start using drugs, you can't evict them for it. If people don't use take yes. their medication, well, you can't evict them for that either. It's in the government. Well, I'm here to tell you that I've overseen multiple use properties, and when someone's using, actively using on our property, I do evict them. And okay. we have attorneys that do the work, yeah, and we not. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, because they've made that choice. They've made that choice. Okay, no, no. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, there's, yeah. there's a lot of concern regarding the lack of police present. If you truly made the statement that you're here to help us and want to do something, you can start by increasing the police present, by funding an additional patrol person or in the county, either through your company or the corporation that's funding this or something. That's a really good ask. Okay, so let me write that down and see. If there's something that we can do, because I, I know there's some. You're doubling the <laughs> I'd like to take you up on talking about the fence and just add, how can we arrange for time to do that? I'm going to give you my phone. Oh, there we go. She has a card. And if she can't reach anybody, how are we supposed to reach So I'm just going to call, and I'm going to get a call back. Oh, exactly. Can I have your card as well? I don't have it with me, but I can give you my information.